Welcome to the AI for You Cafe for live presentations around AI. Today, the speaker is Bhagirat Kumar Lada. He is the Chief Manager, Business Information System at GAIL, G -A -I -L, Limited, a global oil and gas company in India. So I'm very pleased to welcome my speaker from New Delhi, not in Delhi, New Delhi, I heard. Um, Thank you. His yeah. talk. Hi, hi. Yeah. Yeah. And with his talk on artificial intelligence essential for business leaders. My name is Cam McWilliams and I'm the moderator and organizer. I'm the director of the company Grassroot Arts and I'm partner with my company in the European project AI for EU. Please take notice that the session will be recorded. No confidential information shall be shared in this cafe session. In this cafe, the speaker expresses his personal view and opinion. This is not necessarily the official AI for you project opinion or company opinion or an organization opinion. So, what is the cafe about? The Web Cafe offers a series of live web sessions around AI. Participants get the chance to share knowledge and experiences and meet stakeholders from various areas of AI research and applications. And as we know now, not only we meet European AI experts, but also from India today. So I'm very, very happy. And this is an interactive session. So welcome to you all, to all the participants out there. I'm great that you're here. Please write your questions to the speaker in the control panel on the right side. There's like a chat for questions. You can type them in and after the presentation, I will read them to the speaker. And now we're coming to the main point of this cafe. I will now introduce Bagirat and afterwards I give him the moderator role and we start with the presentation. So Bagirat Kumlala from India is a computer science graduate from the Indian Institute of Technology in Delhi and a PGDM from the Indian Institute of Management, Look North. Presently, he's working as chief manager in the business information system at Gale, India Limited, a global AI and gas, gas company. His role in the organization is that of a digital transformation strategist. So, it's really a pleasure to have you here and an honor. Thank you. So, again, welcome, Bagirat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carmen, ma'am. And uh, it is a pleasure for me to be part of uh, AI for You Cafe. And uh, let me, <clears throat> I want to thank you and uh, all the other organizers who are part of this arrangement. And uh, I take uh, this opportunity to thank uh, each one who has helped me to be here, especially those who are attending this webinar. So let us start with today's talk. Uh, it is on artificial intelligence essentials for business leaders. And uh, I believe uh, all of you are uh, business leaders who would like to know about the technology. So agenda for today's talk is uh, motivation why uh, this particular topic is important analytics journey breaking the analytics wall artificial intelligence essentials where we learn about different aspects of uh, what ai is then we discuss uh, machine learning with deep learning then we discuss ai hype versus reality and then we discuss business applications along with some important considerations so let me uh, start but first of all i would like to uh, share with all of you that uh, this information shared in this particular uh, talk are my own opinions and they do not reflect uh, that of my employer or any other organization so we all are uh, part of uh, uh, 
sorry, just uh, this screen has come off. Let me start again, sorry. So we all are part of organizations where uh, analytics uh, is being used. And traditionally analytics, uh, when we discuss, it has four components or four part of analytics journey. First is descriptive and uh, second is uh, diagnostic. Third is predictive and fourth is prescriptive. And uh, this particular uh, aspect is important in the sense that we all make reports. We all are uh, no, I mean, we don't, we know about dashboards and those kind of things. So these are part of uh, descriptive analytics. Diagnostics, we may call, you know, where we ask the question why. So for example, root cause analysis, so there we have drill down reports or we have those kind of uh, information available where we can find the reason behind you know what has happened similarly we have uh, predictive where we can predict the future and then we have prescriptive where not only we predict but uh, system also gives us the needed action that we need to take here there is an analytics wall uh, which has been observed by many of the business anal analysts so most of the organizations they are uh, focusing on descriptive analytics and it is very difficult you know to move from descriptive analytics to predictive and prescriptive and here this particular role of ai becomes very important because when it comes predictive and prescriptive and later on we talk about another aspect of uh, analytics journey so ai becomes important in this scenario so what is the modern way to look our analytic journey modern way is that after prescriptive there is a concept of decision automation and this decision automation can be done with the help of ai Today we have uh, technologies available with us which can help us in decision automation. So let us discuss what AI is, what are the basic ideas. So first of all, we discuss what cognitive capability are. Let me just uh, um, this hide the control bar here. Yeah, I hope you are still able to see my screen. So cognitive ability, we define the ability to reason, ability to solve problems, ability for planning, abstract thinking, complex idea comprehension, and learning from experience. And intelligence is a measure to find out how much of these cognitive abilities one has. Now, AI is a very old subject. Uh, there has been thinkers who have been thinking about this subject not in terms of computers but in terms of getting agents which can work like humans so aristotle uh, oldest thinker so they thought such things like what are basic cognitive operations what necessary conditions should a formal language fulfill in order to be an adequate tool for describing the world in a precise and unambiguous way can reasoning be automated? Is it possible to construct an artificial intelligence system? So these are the questions which thinkers, philosophers, and scientists have been asking for long. So what is AI? AI or machine intelligence is a set of related technologies that seem to emulate human thinking and action. So both are required, thinking and action as humans. It is about building machines or agents which are capable of thinking and acting like humans. So what typically AI systems have, they have, they can learn from experience. They can arrive at their own conclusions. They appear to understand the complex real world use case or scenario. They can participate in natural language conversation and they have co cognitive capabilities like learning and problem solving. So that is what AI is. AI definitions are generally categorized in four categories, and this is taken from uh, one of the very good reference books on AI. So this is thinking humanly, uh, thinking 
as acting humanly thinking rationally and acting rationally so these four ways we can define ai and all the research work till today uh, which we will discuss in detail have focused in these four areas we take the definition of ai as uh, computational intelligence it is the study and design of intelligent agents so that is what we take the definition as acting humanly is the first approach it was uh, given by i mean it was pioneered by turing and uh, turing gave operational definition of uh, ai there is uh, this video in youtube available you can see this imitation game trailer so there they talk about you know what ai can do so here he defined in this particular imitation game there is a human interrogator then there is a human and ai on the other side and if the human interrogator cannot find out whether the ai system is uh, answering the question or human is answering the question then that ai system is supposed to be intelligent so what capabilities it should have then these four capabilities which are colored in different way so these are the essential capabilities so natural language processing knowledge representation automated reasoning machine learning and then two augmented uh, capabilities are required like computer vision and robotics so these make a almost a complete system which we can call intelligent thinking humanly is a approach where uh, we say that uh, we want to understand how humans think so this how how do we know how humans think so that can be through introspection it can be through psychological experiments it can be through brain imaging so more we have uh, these uh, improvements or insights in these technologies better we will be able to design systems which can think like humans then there is a very important concept in ai it is called rationality so a system is rational if it does the right thing given what it knows now this right thing is very important because we have to define for the system what the right thing is so thinking rationally it is laws of thought approach here it was uh, like uh, aristotle was one of the first to uh, codify the logic and uh, later on lot of logical systems have been developed lot of logical methods have been developed for systems to become intelligent so what kind of uh, thinking rationally uh, agent would do like it will have a information socrates is a man and then it has another information all men are mortal so then it will conclude that socrates is mortal so this is thinking rationally approach and then acting rationally this is the final approach so here all computers program do something like they can operate autonomously perceive their environment persist over a prolonged uh, time period adapt to change create and pursue goals so we need a rational agent that acts so as to achieve the best outcome so that is acting rationally and this is one of the very important paradigms in ai as we see later so what are rational agents because computer knows mathematics it knows zero or one and it knows mathematical functions so we can say that ai is ai agent is a function and what this function does it maps this uh, precepts to actions so that is how we can understand a real ai system ai has two goals one goal is driven by industry and here we want to have expert systems second goal is uh, you know driven by academia they want to do research and they want to make machines which act think behave like humans history of ai the concept of ai uh, you can say some kind of machine intelligence started from 1923 the word robot uh, came into being then 1943 we 
came up with the concept of neural networks, artificial neural networks. So McClock and Fritz, they have done the foundational work. And then Alan Turing in 1950, he has done a foundational work. Then there, many of the systems started being developed. So Alan Neville and Herbert Simon, they were great AI researchers. So they developed the system, logic theories. Then 1956, uh, John McCarthy coined the term artificial intelligence. And uh, 1959, this uh, machine learning was introduced as a term by one of the IBM engineers. And a lot of developments happened after that, like uh, shaky robot and those uh, kind of other uh, similar things. Then in 1990s, we can see a lot of advancements happening in uh, algorithms. So a lot of uh, algorithms were developed and a lot of advancements happened in these particular areas like case-based uh, reasoning, multi-agent planning, scheduling, data mining, natural language understanding, translation, vision, virtual reality, and games. And after 1997, uh, 1997 was a landmark when uh, Deep Blue Computer of IBM, it defeated the world chess champion, uh, Gary Kasparov. And after that, a lot of developments have happened and the latest being uh, development of uh, AI poker uh, bot, which defeated the multiplayer, which defeated human professionals in a multiplayer game. So we can see a lot of developments have happened in AI over the years. There are two paradigms in AI. One is symbolic view which talks about logic and other things and it is now called good old-fashioned ai and second is connectionist view which is based inspired on by human brain so here we have artificial neural network and uh, this comes from psychology and uh, this particular scientist uh, edward thondike he was a pioneer in this particular thinking that uh, this concept called connectionism. So he said that uh, when, uh, which states that behavioral responses to a specific stimuli are established through a process of trial and error that affects the neural connections between the stimuli and the most satisfying responses. We discuss this in detail when we discuss deep learning. So how do we represent AI? We represent it using machine learning, robotics, search, fuzzy logic, expert system, and NLP. There is another concept called weak AI and uh, strong AI. So weak AI is something like Alexa, where we have a limited uh, AI uh, intelligent, intelligence capability. And strong intelligence is where we have multiple intel intelligence capability in a single agent. And there is a new term uh, which is called artificial general intelligence. So here it is much like strong AI. There we talk about AI being able to, you know, defeat or reach human level performance in multiple intellectual tasks. So we come to the most important aspect of AI, which, which is machine learning. Because today when we say AI, we typically mean either search or machine learning. So machine learning is a foundational concept in AI. And uh, what is machine learning? A program, a computer program is set to learn from experience E with respect to some class of task T and performance measure P. If its performance, at task T as measured by P improves with experience E, which means given the data, algorithm uh, finds out the logic, how that data has been generated. Meaning once we have more and more data, we can find out the underlying logic in a better way. So the system learns from experience. So when the next iteration of training runs, the system becomes more intelligent. That is what machine learning is all about. Machine learning has three types. Uh, typically in our understanding, we divide them in 
supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. In supervised learning, we have a algorithm which works on data as well as on label. So we are given both the things. So there are two types of tasks that a supervised learning algorithms can do. One is classification and other is prediction. So some of the algorithms like support vector machine, nav bias, uh, class, nav based classifier, linear regression, logistic regression, they are all uh, machine learning, supervised machine learning algorithms. They need data as well as they need a label. So both the things are required, data and the target. So once we feed into system both the data as well as the ground truth or the target or the label, then system learns that this means that. So that is how the supervised learning algorithms work. Unsupervised learning algorithms work uh, without providing any label. We do not label the data. We do not say that this data is, you know, say category X, category Y. We simply give the data to the algorithm and algorithm automatically finds out the pattern in the data. So for example, here we can see in this particular uh, picture that different kinds of fruits are given to the system. System learns that there are different kind of, uh, kinds of fruit. And then when we give the test case to the system, it can automatically find out that there are three kinds of fruits in this particular data. So that is how unsupervised learning algorithms work. The clustering is a most common algorithm in unsupervised learning. Then there are other algorithms like principal component analysis. So these are all work without providing the label data to the system. Third and very important kind of machine learning algorithm is reinforcement learning. Here we give the algorithm a target. So algorithm has to achieve that target. It has to maximize the expected reward in a particular situation. And this is a very powerful algorithm and a lot of applications are there for reinforcement learning. Deep learning is a specialized kind of uh, machine learning where we have neural networks at the back end. So whenever neural networks are there in a particular machine learning algorithm, very likely it will be a deep learning algorithm. Deep learning is based on this connectionist uh, paradigm connectionist uh, thought process where we say that connections become strong when a favorable uh, result comes and they become weak when an unfavorable uh, result comes. So this particular uh, um, experiment was done by uh, Edward Thorndike. So he saw that this connectionism is there in most of the animals and they learn uh, after some you know trials that how to find a pattern to get a particular result. So deep learning is based on connectionism. There are many algorithms for deep learning, convolutional uh, neural network, then recurrent neural network, and they have their own applications. And latest uh, you know, algorithm in this particular uh, thing is GPT-3. So you can read more about it in the internet. It is a very powerful algorithm. It can generate language just like humans. And you will be, it will be very difficult for you to find out whether it was written by a human being or a machine. So periodic table of AI is, uh, there are seven uh, different types of algorithms and we have to use them in a particular scenario. We discuss this later when we discuss the applications. And these are the leading cloud uh, AI platforms. So when it comes to business, you know, we tend to overestimate the effect of a technology in a short run and underestimate the effect of the same technology in long run. So AI is one such technology. We have a lot of expectations from AI in a short run, but in a long run, we may not be so sure, you know, what AI can give us. But this is going to be a revolutionary technology as most of the people have thought. So let us discuss what AI can do. 
there here is a gartner hype cycle for ai 2020 so here we can see that uh, ai machine learning and deep learning so they have uh, crossed their peak of inflated expectation and by between 2022 and 2025 we are going to find lots and lots of applications for these two technologies which industries are impacted by ai uh, we can see manufacturing retail logistics bfsi healthcare legal services advertising aviation then chemicals education agriculture software development and cyber security online shopping sports media and entertainment call centers then we see energy utilities and mining hospitality intellectual property it services management customer experience fashion automotive fortune telling so so many industries are supposed to be impacted by ai and there are other which you know are a lot of uh, important applications are there in gaming casino pharma and drug discovery law enforcement materials discovery defense music industry job search and recruitment so we see i think almost every industry is somehow or other you know being impacted by ai so let us discuss some use cases but before we discuss use cases what do we really want in a business scenario we want to minimize risk and maximize the reward that is the key principle whenever we are taking any business decision so ai is mostly you know like we can segregate the ai applications in three different areas so one is process automation second is cognitive insights and third is cognitive engagement and most of the applications of ai will be in any of these three areas and when we think about new applications for ai especially when we take the case of deep learning so there will be some greenfield applications then there will be a definite improvement scenario and then there will be traditional analytics so what we what research has found is that this definite improvement scenario will be the area where most of the deep learning applications will be typical view of uh, global ai adoption we can this is a survey and uh, in this survey 2737 you know it and line of business executives uh, participated in 2019 so we can see that uh, 27% of them were startups 47% uh, skilled and 26% seasoned so typically such kind of scenario will be found in most of the economies and here nine countries were represented in this particular uh, survey so we can see ai can be used in classification continuous estimation clustering optimization machine vision natural language on anomaly detection ranking recommendation and data generation how can a company you know become a cognitive uh, you know ready or cognitive mature company first of all we need to understand which technologies perform what kind of tasks so we have seen you know what we can do with machine learning what we can do with deep learning so such kind of understanding is the foremost thing then we need to build on current strengths in big data and analytics so this is a very important area where you know a lot of training is required infrastructure uh, development is required and many a time we have to you know also uh, like uh, get a group or analytics center of excellence kind of thing being created in the organization so those are very important steps for strengthening the current uh, setup and then after that 
we create a cognitive strategy. So what is a cognitive strategy? Where we prioritize portfolio of technology matched to processes and tasks. So we find out which are the tasks which can be you know, uh, addressed with a particular kind of technological needs. And then we go for a series of pilot or proof of concept projects. And then we engage in cognitive work redesign using design thinking principle. And then we focus on scaling and achieving productivity benefit. So this scaling is very important. We should not be you know, left with the pilots or proof of concepts. Our project, whatever we are taking for AI, they should scale. So that is a very important requirement for a business AIs. So let us see some you know, scenarios where we can use AI. So does your business case require you know, predicting a continuous numeric value, for example, gas price in international market. That is what your business requires. So what will be the AI use case? You need regression, which is supervised learning. Now consider another scenario. Here we require predicting a class, category, or label. For example, a good piece or a defective piece. So what we will use here? We will use classification, supervised learning. Now, does your business case require creating groupings of similar data to understand the group profiles? For example, customer segmentation, where we need grouping. So here we need unsupervised learning. So we will be using some kind of clustering algorithm. Now consider another business case, identifying un highly unusual or dangerous outliers. For example, network security, fraud, worker without helmets in a, you know, like for example, in a plant, we want to detect those workers we are not who are not wearing helmets in a helmet uh, required areas. So you read anomaly. So we use unsupervised or supervised learning algorithm which can detect anomaly. Now consider this. We need personalizing your product, services, features, or content for customers. For example, Amazon, you know, you see how they personalize their products. So what do we need? We need recommendation engines. We can need ranking or scoring, or we can need personalization. Now consider another case. What we need here, we need uh, detecting lab detect label or identify specific spatial, temporal, or spatio temporal pattern. For example, in an audio or video, you want to detect you know what happened in a video in a particular time or audio. So what do we need? Here we need unsupervised or supervised learning algorithm and uh, it can recognize image, audio, speech, video, handwriting, text. We need computer vision capabilities. So motion detection, gesture, expression, sentiment analysis, and we may need natural language processing. So such are the cases. Now let us discuss some business uh, notable use cases. So first is Google. It is a technology company and it is one of the leaders in AI use cases. So what Google is using AI for? Maximizing the potential of artificial intelligence. So that is their motto. So they use it in personal assistant. They use it for language translation. They use it for self-driving cars, captioning millions of videos on YouTube, diagnose diseases. So they have a Google Health and Google Brain and deep mind walt disney company they are using ai and machine learning for making magical memories that is their motto so what do they do they give their customers magic wristbands which their customers are wearing throughout whenever they are visiting their park and then it can detect you know where the customers are are the customers segregated at a particular location? Can we give them 
a personalized offer or voucher or you know the person who is in charge of uh, safety he can observe he or she can observe you know whether where are the people located right now so those kind of things are possible using machine learn now we consider bmw bmw is uh, using artificial intelligence to build and drive the cars of tomorrow or cars of the future so what do they do so they have uh, done partnership with ibm and uh, they are using uh, ibm watson cognitive computing platform and uh, the idea is that the car could learn how to improve its understanding of driver behavior and then adapts its system to suit uh, personal per preferences by uploading all the data it gathers to the cloud the system is able to build a build a, a vast database of user behaviors and then use machine learning to anticipate the needs and preferences of other drivers so what do the drivers do most so you know, those kind of things uh, those kind of questions you can answer using machine learning finally this important aspect is there in ai which is responsible ai because ai is now affecting each and every aspect of our lives for example the way you drive from your home to office you may use you know google maps or any other navigation system that is based on ai or you, when you apply for job your jobs are mostly you know your resumes are uh, shortlisted using ai algorithms when you go to doctor for a particular treatment if you know the healthcare is advanced then they will use ai systems you know to detect a particular disease or particular condition in your health so ai is now affecting each and every area in our lives so this particular concept responsible ai has become very important and we just uh, discussed three frameworks uh, for uh, responsible ai one is first is by microsoft so microsoft has said that uh, ai system should be should have these checks and balances so first is fairness second is reliability and safety third is privacy and security fourth is inclusiveness then we have transparency and then accountability so all these are part of a responsible ai framework and any ai when we just you know miss any of the any of the part then the ai may you know may not be that useful as it should be so this is one very important framework similarly google has their own framework so first of all they have recommended the best practices for ai then there is a fairness there is interpretability and privacy and security and uh, european union has also come up uh, with their trustworthy ai um, framework and here we have seven uh, requirements key requirements so one is human agency and oversight technical robustness and safety privacy and data governance transparency diversity non discrimination and fairness environmental and societal well being and then finally accountability this accountability is a important concept because what happens if ai system makes mistake who is responsible it is a very important question in the organizations and this accountability becomes a very important aspect in responsible ai framework so i think with this uh, my talk i have completed and uh, we can take take up questions and answers uh, as per what uh, other people would like to know thank you thank you very much thank you bagirat that was a very good insight <laughs> into ai and business i would like to know because you are in india at the moment so as you just said in the end uh, in europe we think that data Beside data, also trust is all for AI. So we talk about trustworthy AI. Um, what is the strategy in AI in India? 
do you follow a framework actually uh, india there is a agency called uh, niti ayog so niti ayog uh, is responsible for making ai framework for india so they have uh, given their draft on their website and it has a lot of provisions for uh, you know ai so one of uh, their focus area is you know healthcare agriculture mm -hmm. education and then they also want to you know use ai for urban planning or you can say smart cities and then transportation and uh, mobility so that is another focus area so what they are now focusing is they want to develop a center of excellence so mm -hmm. one is uh, uh, driven by government uh, funding or state funding and other is uh, governed or driven by industry so both the routes they are thinking and uh, they want uh, uh, ai which is for everybody it should not be only for the privileged few so that is what uh, they are thinking about ai Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes. So now comes um, Natalie, a question from Natalie from Canada. So we are jumping now from Europe to Canada <laughs> to India. Yeah. Given the current global pandemic, social economic challenges, would the use of a common data framework, such as the 17 SDGs of the UN Agenda 2030, Sustainable Development Goals are the SDGs. No? Enable mm -hmm. aligned systemic, systemic solutions for a collective goal of a fair and peaceful world. Question. Shall I repeat? Yeah, I think I missed out. Uh, yeah. I repeat. I repeat. Given current global pandemic, social economic challenges, would the use of common data frameworks such as the 17 SDGs of UN Agenda 2030 enable aligned systemic solutions for a collective goal of a fair and peaceful world? It's not easy. See, actually, the question is very complex, but what I would like to say is that AI can help in achieving UN's sustainable development goals. So a lot of mm -hmm. research has been done in this particular area and World Economic Forum has released many I mean, studies and papers in this particular area. And I feel, for example, you know, hunger, that is a big global problem. So AI can help in precision agriculture, AI can help in, you know, re reduction of pesticides and those kind of herbicides. AI can help in proper management of food for storage management supply chain so all these things will help in achieving the sustainable goals so there are different sustainable goals uh, i have like mostly read mo about these areas where ai is directly imp impacting for example climate change there you know ai can help in a great way because ai can manage optimize things so carbon emission for example if the traffic is managed very properly then the carbon emissions will be less lesser and then when our grids are managed properly using ai or machine learning then there mm -hmm. will be minimal uh, waste for energy and then uh, social uh, sorry the solar power lot of mm -hmm. uh, optimization can be done using ai so many of the un's uh, sustainable goal can be achieved using ai so that is what my understanding is uh, i do not know about others but Definitely, these two areas are very relevant for you. Great, thank you. Wow, <laughs> you have a good answer. <laughs> That's a complex question. <laughs> so anyway, um, I have a question because um, as we are now in India, do you have in like a business wise, like we talked before about this trustworthy uh, AI, do you have I mean, not only in India, but do you have um, anywhere an example of trustworthy AI? Did you see something like that already? Do you have an example what that could be? Uh, actually, maybe it is meeting most of the requirements. That is what I would say. So there are two examples. One example is, you know, this Google map. So it gives mm -hmm. you navigation. 
so that navigation takes care of so many you know aspects and uh, i think it is fair you know it is transparent you can see i mean it is taking the data from everybody so many of the fair or responsible ai principles are you know captured in this particular app and uh, you can see that google search for that matter is not it is not a based on responsible ai because it will rank based on you know advertisements and other things and some people can put malicious uh, sites and other things also and they can manipulate the ranking but in case of navigation uh, google maps i think this is a fair i would say responsible ai system another is uh, there is a app by microsoft it is uh, for uh, is visually challenged people so that app can describe the world to the visually challenged so it is i think called seeing ai uh, that particular app so when people who are visually challenged when they use the app it can tell them what is in front of them what is the scenery or like so those kind of things are now possible using ai and i think that is a good example of a responsible ai system yes that's a good yes yes and now a little bit personal um uh, it's basically what excites you in the moment you uh, in ai research most what makes you really passionate <laughs> Uh, actually, I have been following AI since uh, 2003 when I graduated. So I have uh, followed AI system and developments from that time. But I became especially interested in AI in 2000, uh, 2016 when we had uh, this AI project in our uh, organization. So we organized a talk by an eminent AI expert and i became very interested in this particular topic and then when i read more about it when i read the books from very different perspectives for example philosophy society how it is impacting the society how it is impacting the nation and then there are areas which require our concern for example autonomous weapons you know those are the areas which uh, do require a lot of uh, framework, uh, AI safety requirements they need to meet. So I became very interested in this particular topic and I have been following most of the updates uh, including the latest you know, update in AI which is GPT-3. It is a very fantastic AI system uh, although it is restricted only to language but the capabilities are very, you know, very good and uh, i mean it is very interesting to see what all you can achieve uh, using such a system like gpt3 and one very important thing which really makes me happy about ai is its use in healthcare so healthcare mm -hmm. is cannot be afforded by each and every person especially in the rural rural areas uh, ai system can help because a simple app can identify many of the conditions so that is a great thing and it can benefit millions you know if we use ai in a responsible way so that makes me very much uh, interested in ai yes. yes thank you and i would like now to slowly stop our cafe session also the questions are now answered if um, anybody wants to ask more questions please also write me or Right, Bagirat, you see the email in the slide on the left side. So feel free to contact us and we try to answer. And also the presentation is available. Um, so we will have a recording if Bagirat allows it. <laughs> I'm going to send it to you. No? I told you. I'm sending it. I now take back my super moderator role because I want to show you what's coming next. Yeah, thank you. Moment. Thank you. One moment. Let me see. Uh, here. So, and this was Bagir. One moment. Sorry. So. So next will be November 18th, and here we go. Sorry, this is a little bit 
this function right now. Anyway, this um, I want to invite you next uh, Wednesday to Stony Trend because uh, it's interesting. We are today we, are, we have Bagheera from uh, Delhi and then we have Stony from US. So we're doing a little bit international travel uh, to get different viewpoints. Um, it's really interesting also for us European to see how these trustworthy regulations <laughs> feel like in other continents. Um, so next week is Tony Trent. He will say he will talk about approaches and lessons for trustworthy human-centered AI. So here we have again this word trustworthy in it. And so welcome to come back next week. And I wish you a wonderful afternoon. And thank you for coming to us. <laughs> yeah, I hope thank you, everyone from India. Yes and uh, it was pleasure thanks yes. once again thank you thank you everybody and see you soon again bye-bye huh? thank you